Hey, how's it going? My name is Brian Johnson. I'm the technical director of the Stockton Center Theater. I'm sitting here with some of my friends uh, from our current show of 1776 and shows of the past. Um, uh, so, uh, left, right, Janelle, uh, Jesse, Josh, and Nick. It's me and I'm Brian. Um, the reason for us sitting here is the 4th of July, so you can tell my calendar back up there if we're in the frame. Uh, currently, we have 1776 on the stage at Stockton Civic. And we've built our own theatrical replica of uh, Independence Hall. Um, but I couldn't get through the 4th of July without having a, a talk with some of my closest friends here um, in regards to what's going on in modern day politics, particularly the uh, 2016 presidential primary election, which is, uh, I mean, this has been the most contested, uh, uh, aggressive, um, the, the most chaotic uh, election cycle that I have seen in my lifetime. And I thought the election 2000 was bad when we got to Florida, but this one has topped it all. Um, from the widespread voter suppression and fraud that has happened in state after state, where exit polls have been so far off of the final uh, tally results that in any other country, uh, it would it would uh, there would be um, rules, it would be precedent for us to recount the entire state. Um, it, it, no UN inspector could look at, at the states that have voted here and uh, say that it was a fair election. 90%, I believe it's 90%, of Americans don't have any faith in our electoral process. So uh, as we enjoy the, the, um, the wonderful story of 1776 and the, and the tremendous struggle that the original colonists went through to uh, get themselves out of um, affiliation with Great Britain because of the oppression of King George. Um, the bravery that these uh, men had in standing up to impossible odds um, is just as inspiring as a uh, story as, as one could have. Then that, that's the American dream, and that's the, those founding fathers. Um, I couldn't uh, I couldn't imagine the um, what they would think if they saw what was happening uh, in our country today. Probably wouldn't be surprised, but it's it's a um, it's a sad time for for America uh, when our votes don't count when so many people uh, have um, been disenfranchised. Um, I wonder, uh, Nick, uh, if you tell me um, how you've enjoyed what uh, being a part of 1776, uh, briefly, being a part of 1776, and, and what thoughts you may have had um, over the what's happened over the course of the uh, primary election. Um, well, on the primary election, uh, and I, I talked with, uh, to you about this before, but um, before really all these uh, campaigns started and before I started really hearing about people, I just remember, you know, Hillary Clinton in particular, you know, people were going like, you know, is she gonna run? And no, oh, she said she wouldn't, but is she? And, um, and she did end up, and you, know, and you know, she's already a famous name, she's already everywhere. You know, the Clinton name is a franchise back and um, and I just kind of I remember just kind of thinking to myself, yeah, I'll probably vote for her, or I won't. I don't know. I don't really care because it doesn't look like there's anyone I really care about, and um, or that there's going to make any sort of real difference or attempt to. And um, I don't remember when it was. I think it was when John Stewart was still on the Daily Show. And he was, and he featured Bernie Sanders' first uh, speech, is like, or one of his around the, like when he was first campaigning. And I just remember listening to him and just being like, "Wow, he's hitting on real issues," and that's what he's basing his platform on. 
You know, like that's, he's not, you know, he's not trying to sugarcoat anything. He's not trying to just, you know, you know, squeeze into the political game. He's just, he's looking at what people want and what is really wrong with this country and then and he's trying to attempt to address those issues. It it's, seems like we've found the same thing. How have you guys felt about this? Um, the, the, the thought of a candidate trying to change the establishment system. Um, I know, uh, Josh, I know that you're a uh, libertarian. Uh, Jesse and Janelle, I'm not sure where your political allegiance lies. No affiliation. Yeah. No right. affiliation. Right. We, we, both of us have pretty much abandoned the, um, uh, any particular party because parties, I feel personally, that parties no longer represent the people. They were originally founded on that. But it's turned into a system where parties are telling us who to vote for instead of the other way around. And that's not what we represent. It's like I very much represent uh, the people still have a voice, and if they can't voice it, then then if their representatives can't voice what what the people want, then they they, they can't. And because they can't, and that's how it is right now. Uh, I'm a little bit. Well, I'm trying to make my point. The, the basically the parties don't no longer represent. That they are dictating to us who they want to vote. This is the they're two, giving us no other choice. The two party yeah. system, yeah. the Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah. Because so, the other parties are not, not, they're not considered entities, really. I mean, the Green Party, the Libertarian yeah, Party, they're, 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 they're considered an independent entities. party. They're, they're strange. And that's part of that struggle of people wanting to be represented by their parties. They form new parties, but the, the, the major powers in place say, well, there's, there's no room for you. I'm sorry. Like we, we, we have to. That's good. It's nice that you have that you think you have a voice, but really, this is your only choice. And so many people feel that way. Yeah. That that they no longer have representation anymore. That the parties dictate them who their choices are, and that's it. And this was a this was uh, the same thought that Ross Perot had, I believe, when he ran in '92, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, and. Uh, Ralph Nader, when he ran in 2000, I think he's run more uh, more often than that. Um, yeah, so. Josh, uh, um, where does uh, your your allegiance is with uh, Gary Johnson uh, yes. in this current election? What mm -hmm. brought you to? I'm sorry. What brought you to Gary uh, uh, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian Party? Well, um, I s actually started out um, uh, growing up uh, in a uh, in, a, in a Republican household. And that's uh, when I first registered to vote. That's uh, that's what I registered as. Um, and as I got older and I started to um, started to form my own opinions on a lot of different things, I I found that I was, while still not still not quite left wing, I found that I was definitely no longer right wing anymore. And I started looking into um, into other uh, political affiliations and um, the the Libertarian Party. Uh, Metaphorically, you know, called out to me the most because that's uh, where my views seemed to be uh, aligned with the most. Um, and so, there, it for for me, like my my whole stance was was just like um, stemming from getting absolutely sick of things that are happening from uh, either end of the political spectrum. And with me being right in the center, I'm just like, okay. You're right on these things. You're wrong on these things. But you're also wrong on these things where these people are right on these things. So that was where I pretty much found myself. And this is comes back to uh, the the two party um, domination is where I think a lot of us as as younger voters, relatively younger voters, I'm mean, going be a little bit you guys, but. Um, not finding a home in the Democrats because they take exception to many of the things uh, that are on their platform, particularly this year, or the things that are not on their platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the Republicans, I've never really associated myself as a, a Republican, um, although um, many of the Republican points of view I take to heart. Um, there's many of the things I, I believe in that, that, that their party stands for. So I'm lost in the middle, not like you guys. When I heard Bernie Sanders um, 
And I look back at his 40 year record of standing up for working people yeah. and the longest serving independent in con congressional history. Um, it, that made me stand up and take notice because every, for, for every single bad thing that's happened in this country over the last 30, 40 years, you, you can look back at where Bernie Sanders was in his career. He was fighting against the idea of uh, the, the, the repeal of Glass-Steagall, for example, which allowed the uh, investment banks to uh, use uh, the secure funds uh, and they merged investment banks with commercial banks. So, so uh, they could gamble with our investment and, and, and that you know, led to lots of disaster. The, um, the, the Iraq war, the, the, um, it, 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 we can, every single point in history where a bad decision has been made, be it a, a trade policy, which is you know, this NAFTA, CAFTA, and now this Trans-Pacific Partnership, yeah. which is uh, attempting, they're, they're attempting to push this thing through with a lame duck Congress and a lame duck president. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, who's pushing it through? But my party, or the party that I'm still registered in, the Democrats. I can't, um, do you guys have any thoughts on, on, on this? Um, Janelle? Um, well, actually, my, my opinions and my perceptions have actually grown in the past couple weeks, because I just came back from Germany, uh -huh. which is a totally different company, but or country, rather. Um, but talking to them about politics and what they've been through, like historically, when we think about Germany, we think about World War II. And everybody knows the, the struggles that Germany has had and the Berlin Wall and all of the problems that they had. And it made me realize that as a country, we're really, really young compared to so many other countries. We haven't been around this long. And it started making me think that I think part of what's happening is as a country, we're having growing pains. I think what we're experiencing is something that other countries have experienced but so much earlier that they've already learned the lessons that we're learning as a country now and when i was speaking to a lot of germans they were they were pointing out things that they consider red flags that they've been through and they're saying you know when, when we talk about this or they talk about our candidates and look at them they say you know we usually try to avoid that but we've been down that road in terms of doing certain political things or alienating certain groups or minorities or majorities or what have you. I mean, scapegoating, scapegoating yeah. certain minority Definitely. groups as, um, yeah, yeah, for the reason why the poor people in our country or their country, the reason that we're struggling is because we've got all of these immigrants coming in. And this is, I think, this is uh, what prompted what's happening with the Britain leading the European Union. Yeah. They, um, they're, they're using the, because it's much easier for the people raking in the money to point at other people who can't defend themselves and to use them as an excuse for why we can't pay you anymore. And it's or, very easy to blame an other as opposed to an us because I think lately now Americans were very motivated by paranoia and fear and 9-11 had a lot to do with that. And sure. We worked really hard to try and fix that and to manage the, the turmoil that we had and the confusion that we had because it was new territory. And for my generation, I didn't grow up seeing things like Vietnam. So when we look at the Iraq War, we're so cocooned away from that. It's, it's on a television and it's on social media, but it doesn't affect me because I'm here and I'm safe. And I don't see any of that really happening the way Vietnam affected people because it was the first time you ever saw all of that televised and it was hitting everyone so hard that they got very passionate about it and people really wanted a voice. And I think now my generation and even our country as a whole, we're losing our voice because we don't have a collective anymore. And I think with 1776, the whole point was coming here, we wanted to carve out a space for our voice to be heard because it wasn't being heard in Britain. And I think now, with Bernie Sanders, for example, kind of shaking things up, and when you throw that term socialism around, it scares people a lot, because in our history, when we think about socialism, we think about a lot of propaganda that happened, and a lot of, again, that paranoia and fear that was used around that word that gives people a preconceived notion, and I think now we're at a point where we have so much more research, and we have so much more foresight to look back and realize that you have to redefine things, because you can't define them based off of 
old propaganda and old fears because we need to move forward. And I think we're having a hard time making our voice for her, and I think Bernie Sanders really wants to do that. And it I scares think, people. I think, I you think know, differences right. make people very nervous, and it's hard because it's an unknown. But I think we need that as a country. I think that turning point could be really positive, and it could be negative, but I think we're at a point that we can take that gamble and have that difference because what we've been doing hasn't been working, and we see that now. I agree. Would you, uh, Josh and Jesse, um, who are both, what, what do you guys think about that word socialism when you hear it? I know what, it, what for me, I've, I've educated myself on it. I know that you know, we are already a democratic socialist country. Um, the, it, it's socialism is not communism. Socialism is not what's happening in Cuba. Socialism is not what's happening in the, the, the old USSR. It, it, no, um, we our social programs, our public education, our social programs, social security, obviously, mm -hmm. the the fire department, the police department, every single government agency that is, serves the public is a social program. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, they've demonized this word, I fear, or I believe, out of fear of what Bernie Sanders could do by when if he chose to break up the big banks. Breaking up the big banks? You know, that sounds great to folks like us, but when you think about the people who are making billions of dollars and, yeah. and have millions of dollars in investments, you think that they want their, uh, to borrow a young Turk's phrase, you want their apple cart turned over? Yeah. No, no. So, um, with the stigma of a socialist uh, at, at his name, uh, Sanders still seemed to, he embraced it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, he, well, I mean, he was a Democratic, he, even when he first was, like in the, in the beginnings of his political career, he pretty much, that's what he came in saying, like, I'm a Democratic Socialist. You know, or he had said that once he was already in place. I mean, I don't know, but um, like he didn't hide it. Yeah. You know, because he understood that it didn't mean that he was going to take over our government and you know enslave us. Yeah. Yet he still knew they were going to beat him over the head with it mm -hmm. on the campaign trail. I it just everything that this man has done. Uh, yeah. It is so outside of the norm yeah. of what we're and used to. very committed. Even though he knows he's going to face that, he's still committed to pushing it forward. Yeah. I, I think it's very it, and that's, that, that's more of that fear mongering that's happening in, in, in mainstream media for sure. You know, we'll take a word that maybe even isn't that bad of a word, but we'll make it sound bad and throw it back at you. And then suddenly everybody it's like else is going to equality. Gonna, that's yeah. a very incendiary word now. And it, it, that has a positive connotation, but you say the word equality, and it stirs up things like and, a hornet's nest now. And, and it, it's part of this, this mass miscommunication that's happening to make people you know, feel insecure yeah. and, and have people you know, put them in a position where they can repeat these words and not even understand what they're talking about. Yeah. And, it's, and, it's the same reason why. Uh, why the original Reefer Madness film was made in, in 37 was, you know, to, to bank on that, on that fear and that paranoia, you know. They, yeah, in order to introduce policy and, and, absolutely. and, the, and make votes swing one way. One of, the fi one of the final lyrics of the musical adaptation of it that I've always loved uh, that the lecturer says is, when danger's near, exploit their fear. Yeah. That, That's to me, just really personifies American yeah. politics in my mind, which is really sad. Wasn't it William Randolph Hearst? Who uh, who ran that propaganda oh, yes. campaign? Yep. And as I understand it, uh, uh, it's not really in any of the history books. But if you look for this information, did, wasn't it due to the fact that he had vast amounts of land that were being that, 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 they, were, that they were using the lumber? Yep. yep. And and uh, uh, hemp was a threat to the, the new uh, invention. I think it was Dupont who invented yeah. uh, yep. nylon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hemp was a much cheaper source. And way better on the environment. But with DuPont and William Randolph Hearst uh, in cahoots, uh, well, we've got 10 minutes here, so we'll keep back on it. Um, so with those in cahoots, they used to fear and, yeah. and forced uh, the public to feel a certain way. And next thing you know, laws were passed. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, medicinal purposes, uh, well, we did go on. This is not the top of this one. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but, but uh, very interesting nonetheless. The, the, the point is that the use of fear yeah. is, is rampant in mm -hmm. all of American politics. And, and Especially in the election. Yeah, I, I've and never seen this back before. Kind of calling card yeah, right the consolidation of media yeah, over yeah. the last the control 30, 40 media. years yeah. and so yeah. down from so many sources down to like six. Yeah, and those six all work together on a on the same message. It doesn't matter if it's yeah. CNN, MSNBC, right. it ABC, CBS. Oh, you know, all all of these mainstream networks are owned by corporations yep. who are global corporations and with their you know and their uh, the vast amounts of money these parent companies make and yeah. all their affiliates it's, it's there's the assumption that you know my team's for cnn and my party's for fox news but the right. truth is if you really knew the industry you would know that they're all commingled together yeah it's it's really kind of like a mirage well it's, well, it's like it's like you it's, it's like you uh, you just have been saying for a long time that um the the Big Brother entity in 1984 wasn't the government; it was corporations. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that, that's—I mean—that's—that's that's everywhere. Every card that's in your wallet has a statistic about what you do, what you buy. I mean, and that is—that is messaged out everywhere. The 1984 aspect of what's happening is big in corporations, and that swings votes because those same corporations contribute to politicians, contribute to policies. Well, look at the, and, 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 right. the money for Hillary and Trump has been enormous. Yeah. Yeah. And so getting money out of politics is has been one of Sanders' primary goals. Yeah. Um, and I respect every, that everybody, um, everybody who stands to gain from the money in politics is running that the, there are among those uh, parent companies that run these news, the, the news organizations, where most of America gets their information from, and their vast amount of uh, um, people who are experienced in uh, manipulating the minds of uh, the people who watch their programming. I mean, mass communication research has been a, a field of study uh, and propaganda for uh, for decades since World War II. After, well, everybody who ran the propaganda um, for World War II in the military, as soon as the war was over, they went into private companies and found themselves at the heads of all of the major daily newspapers, all the magazines, and those in time have now consolidated down to very few uh, very uh, um, outlets of information. So um, getting the money out of politics is not in the interest of anybody who's in charge at CNN, anybody who's in charge at MSNBC or any of the others, because all of the money that goes into politics goes into buying television advertising. But with luck, we will see the end of television as we know it, because we're already starting it's to see it. Out, yeah. right? and I think that we're, the, and, and we're, we're down to our last five minutes here. So. Um, um, I, I think that maybe we ought to, at least I want to thank you guys for, for um, making some time today on the 4th of July. I'll just shoot the breeze on, on uh, things that, you know, matter to this country. In, in the end, I'm, I'm only voting for Bernie Sanders. Sorry about this lie. That's okay. Too many lies. Too many lies. Uh, anyway, I'm only voting for Bernie Sanders, um, even if I got to write his name in, because uh, well, fortunately we've got paper ballots here in South at least in my precinct. Yeah. Um, Nick, any thoughts? Uh, I do have a couple of thoughts because um, you had asked me in the beginning about 1776. Yeah. I thought it was just when I had first watched it, like the movie. It was the only way I could really watch it. I'd never seen a production of it before, besides this that yeah. we're in. Um, I just thought it was so beautiful how, because they had to deal with seceding from the biggest empire in the world. Yeah. You know, that's what they were up against. And somehow, they unanimous, unanimously voted for it. You know, somehow they, yeah, somehow they got together and somehow they just had a collective consciousness and just said, yay. And um, I just, that was so inspiring, and it just it made me sad because it was just like, well, fuck, all we have to do is like, you know, have free healthcare, which you know, honestly, I mean, that sounds like, oh, that sounds idealistic, but it's like, what makes someone 
who makes all of the money in the world more important than someone who is you know, diagnosed with leukemia, who can't afford anything, yeah. and they can't get health care. What, what's the difference? Besides that they're human beings, and that's the thing. And um, I, it's just, it, I, I just get really frustrated about how um, they don't acknowledge like, it's just, it's like, well, now, you know, Bernie's obviously going to lose, and he's going to lose, so he should just, you know, endorse Hillary, and yada, yada, and all go by that. And it's just, it's just, it's sad, because it's basically, they're now not acknowledging his platform, they're not acknowledging yeah. anything that he stood for, they're not, you know, basically, they might say they will, but that's happened before, and it's just, it's nothing's really gonna actually change. And that's what I fear. I fear that everything that he stood for, everything that he based his platform on is just gonna be forgotten if, you know, if obviously we don't do something. We will. But, Josh, yeah. any final thoughts? We've got, we probably got just a couple minutes left. So we'll... Sorry for the F-bomb. <laughs> my, my final thought uh, really just, is, can really be summed up in the fact that I absolutely, despite the many problems that, that we have and will probably always have, I absolutely love this country. And because of that, it really, really, really hurts me when I see, um, when I see it run by absolute uh, idiocy. And, mm -hmm. and um, for me to actually like, you know, openly, um, openly talk about politics in any way, is um, is not something I normally do, but man, this this time around things are just things are so insane that I'm just like, you know what? To quote Twisted Sister on this, we are not going to take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think it's, it's I, you know for my final thought, um, I, I'm not trying to do any more fear mongering, but I don't think we're heading back to the status quo. I don't mm -hmm. think we're going back to the way it was before. There are precursors in history where examples of fear mongering and control of money and control of policy has led to very bad things when a people do not have a say. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. And so another one that's been thrown around is revolution. And it's been said with, in association with Bernie Sanders. And I don't know if that's what we're heading into, but we're heading into something, and I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> um, uh, Political revolution, as long as it's peaceful, it worked for Gandhi. <laughs> but we're um, not having peace. We have unrest all over yes, the country. Yes, we do. It's problem. just, it's, it's, uh, how, do we, how do we fight it yeah. without physically fighting it? It's got to be a war of intelligence. Yep. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think that's actually a really good point, is it doesn't have to be a war of intelligence. I think in terms of fear, I'm not a Trump supporter, but I can empathize with that because he's definitely pushing that really strong aggression. Yes. And I think people are so used to just going along with the politician who says the right mm -hmm. things and you vote for that person. And he's been very outspoken about saying things that are not popular, that are very scary. And I think because Americans are motivated so often by fear that they're ready to go for that. And yeah. I think with Hillary, me personally, I look at that and I don't understand how it's possible that she got this far because all of her corruption has been so publicized. And yes. I think that the movement is definitely happening. I think that something is coming, and I think we need it. Whether it's good or bad, we're going to come through it no matter what we have to. That's what humans do. So I think one way or another, we're going to figure it out. Nice. Well, look, um, again, thank you, my friends, for making time on the 4th of July. Just to, just to sheet the breeze on this. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's good. And thanks to anybody out there who tolerated watching us. Yeah, thanks. Um, we, uh, no matter what, in the end, we're all going to still come together as Americans. No, I won't be voting for Hillary. No, I won't be voting for Trump. But same. <laughs> same. But here, here. No matter what happens, we're going to we're going to get through this together. So uh, again, thank you.